In this video grade 10s, we're going to have a look at quadratic equations. Now, if you've had a chance to watch the previous video where we spoke about linear equations, you'll remember that linear equations, they had a degree of 1. However, now when we start dealing with quadratic equations, you'll see that they have a degree of 2. So just to recap a bit, a degree is the highest power or the highest exponent on a variable, so in other words, on the x or the y or whatever we're solving for, in an equation. So if the degree is 2, that means the highest exponent on x is 2. This 2, though, or the degree rather, it also corresponds to the number of answers or solutions an equation will have. So in this case, you can see that we have a degree of 2. Therefore, any quadratic equation will have two solutions. Now, something that I find very important to explain to you guys, and you'll see how it benefits you, especially when you get to grade 11, is the standard form of a quadratic equation. Now, for those of you who do AP Maths and you want to go and look a little bit ahead, when I talk about standard form, go and have a look at something called the quadratic formula. And you'll actually see how easy it is to use the quadratic formula to solve these equations. But again, that's not for grade 10. But if you're interested to go and have a look at it, you can. So the standard form of a quadratic equation, and I'll give it to you, is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And what you see here is that the a, b, and c well, those are just numbers. Those are just coefficients of x. Now, the reason that this standard form is so important is that you can't solve a quadratic equation if you don't write it in the standard form first. So if you can, write down somewhere for yourself right away that the first step whenever you're solving a quadratic equation is to write it down in standard form. And just a couple of points that you can note from the standard form. Do you see how I start by writing x squared? Then I write the x. Then I have my constant term. So this c term here will basically just be a number. So I'm basically writing an equation in descending powers of x. So we start with a high exponent on x and we go lower and lower step by step. That's one thing to remember. The second thing to remember is that on one side of the equals, we always have a zero. So you need that zero on one side of the equals. And the reason that that's so important is because of something we call the zero factor law. And I'll come back to that in a second. But before we answer that, we need to ask the question, what method do I use to solve these equations? And by now you should know that that method is your guy's best friend, factorization. So we've done a lot of factorization so far. And you can see that if we've got a squared term there, this is in fact a trinomial. So quadratic equations are trinomials. And you know how to factorize those trinomials. That then brings us to this idea of the zero factor law here. Now, what the zero factor law means is basically this, and you can also think of it, another name for it is the zero product law. Now, a product means we multiply. So it's basically saying the zero multiplication law. 
And how would something like that work? We'll take a look at the example at the bottom of the page here. We've got x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Ask yourself the question, is this equation in standard form? Yes, it is. So we know we have to factorize it. So let's see what happens when we go ahead and factorize it. If we do that, we're going to get, there's our therefore, we're going to get x plus 3, x plus 2 equals 0. Now, do you see how this is basically two brackets, two different brackets that are multiplied together? So basically, what we've got here is a product of two brackets. Now, why would I use a word like product over there? The reason I'm using that word is because it directly relates to that zero product law. And what it means is that there's our first product and there's our second product. Or there's our first factor and there's our second factor. And in order to solve this equation, all you guys need to know is that if one of those factors becomes zero, the entire equation becomes zero. And the reason that works is because we know that anything multiplied by zero is zero. So looking back at that side of the equation, I hope you can see, let me just neaten it up, We've got x plus 3, x plus 2. I hope you can see that as long as one of those brackets becomes 0, the equation will all become 0. So in other words, if this bracket became 0, we would have 0 times whatever's there, and it would give us 0. So the equation works. Likewise, if I went the other way around, and I made this bracket equal to 0, well then it would be x plus 3 times 0, which is 0, and on the other side of the equation we have 0. So it works. And the way that we can basically do that is say that as long as one of these brackets is 0, the equation works. So as long as x plus 3 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0, the equation will be solved. And you'll see that these two over here, I can actually solve them quite easily. For the first one, all I have to do is take the 3 over, so I'll get x is equal to minus 3, or x is equal to minus 2. And guys, if I then went and I substituted minus 2 into the x there and the x there, I would get 0. So the equation would work. Likewise, if I went and took the minus 3 over here and I substituted into x there and x there, I would again get 0. And so that value works as well. Do you see we have two solutions? So the fact that we have two solutions... works perfectly with what we spoke about in the degree in the beginning. So just for yourself to take down a few steps, you always write it in standard form first, then you know that you're going to use factorization, so you can factorize your expression, and then you use that zero factor law by making each of the factors equal to zero, and then solving for x. So that's how we solve quadratic equations. Let's have a look at two more examples. So have a look at the first example there. It's 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. We know that before we can begin it has to be in standard form, which it is because we've got an x squared there, our x there, our constant term, and of course the 0 on the right hand side of the equation. So this is in standard form already. But the difference between this question and the previous one that we looked at is the fact that now I have a coefficient 
in front of x squared. So the fact that we've got a 2 in front there means that we're going to have to factorize this like an advanced trinomial. And I know you guys did tend to struggle with that. And so working through this example bit by bit, we'll see how to factorize those advanced trinomials. The way we did that was to take the coefficient of x squared and that constant term and write out their factors. So we know that the factors of 2 are 2 and 1. So you can write them out underneath each other, 2 and 1. And we know that the factors of 3 are 3 and 1 and 1 and 3. Now, this is called the cross method that we're going to use. And basically what you guys need to understand is that we need to multiply across the values like that and then add them so that we get that value in the middle. Okay? And then we can pick our factors by going across. So that would be one factor and that would be another factor. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second. So let's start by going 2 times 1, which is 2, and 1 times 3, which is 3. And if we go and add those numbers together, do you see we get positive 5? Guys, another thing you need to watch out for, the sign that we put over here doesn't necessarily have to be positive. We're allowed to make this a negative or that a positive, this a negative or a positive, with the goal of getting some combination so that we get that value over there. And so you can see it works immediately in this case, where we got the 2 and the 3 and we get 5 as our answer over there. So because of that, you now need to notice that our first bracket, so if we go and write down our brackets like that, our first bracket will be taking those numbers there. So these numbers going across. So it would be 2 from over there. Then we follow it with an x because of the x over there. And then in front of the 3, there's a positive because of what we wrote down here. And so it will be 2x plus 3. So 2x plus 3. Then for the second bracket, it will be the second piece down there. The 1 and the 1. So it would basically be 1 from over here. Followed by an x plus 1 because that's a positive 1. So plus 1. But of course you know that we don't need to write that 1 in front. So it becomes x plus 1. Now that we've factorized our advanced trinomial so nicely, we can use our zero factor law. So we know that means look at the first factor, look at the second factor, write them down so that they become 0. So in other words, 2x plus 3 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. Then I'm just going to rearrange, so it's going to be 2x equals minus 3, therefore x is equal to minus 3 over 2, and on this side, x becomes minus 1. So, there's solution number one, there's solution number two, which is correct because we have a degree of two. And if I take those solutions, either this one or this one, and I plug them back into my original equation, I will get zero for both of them. So, this equation works perfectly. This will be the last example for this video. Again, this is a quadratic formula, but the problem in this case is that it's not in standard form. So we have to write it in standard form first. And whenever you see a bracket like this, you know the chances are you need to 
distribute the value in. So in this case, distribute the x into the bracket. So by doing that, we can see that x times x will give us x squared, and x times 4 will give us 4x, and that will equal 32. But again, looking at the second step, that's still not in standard form because we need a 0 on that side. So what do I do? I subtract 32 from both sides. So I would get x squared plus 4x minus 32 equals 0. So I minus 32 from both sides or move that 32 over. But if you watch my last video, you'll remember how I explained the way we deal with equations. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and factorize it quite straightforward. The factors here would be x minus 8, or x plus 8, x minus 4 equals 0. And the way I did that was I looked at the 32, and I know that the factors of 32 one set of them is 8 and 4, but I know that because I've got a negative over there, that I'm going to have opposite signs in the brackets. And because of that positive over there, I realize it had to be plus 8 minus 4 to give us positive 4, because that positive 4 is the positive 4 over there. So that's how we work with factorizing trinomials. A little bit later on, I will get a chance to do a video where we factorize more trinomials, but you should be quite good with that up until now. Then we apply our zero factor law. So there's the first factor. There's the second factor. We go and we take it and allow it to equal zero. So we would say x plus 8 equals zero or x minus 4 equals zero. Therefore, x equals minus 8, or x equals 4. An extra bit of information for you guys. This step in the middle over here, we actually don't need it. So we don't need to see this step. But for a lot of you, if you're worried about making silly mistakes, rather fill it in so that you don't risk that for yourself. So there's a video on how we solve quadratic equations using factorization.